Hi everybody, it's Erin from The Impatient Gardener. I wanted to show you a project that I have been working on since last fall. I'm really excited about because this is an area of the garden that got really messy and just I just sort of let it go and last year I sort of decided to do something about it. So it's an area that I call the circle garden. It's right off our front door. It's one of the first things you see when you come in our house. And when we first moved here, this area was sort of a derelict vegetable garden. There was weeds in it and a couple little shrubs, but it had clearly been used as a vegetable patch at one point. So what, shortly after we moved in here, we decided to change this into something a little bit more ornamental. So we turned it into an oval. I call it the circle garden because that has a better ring to it. Um, and I kind of put these curvy paths in it and it didn't really work because I was taking a really formal shape and trying to make it informal and I think that can work in some cases like formal shape with informal planting but it didn't work in this case I sort of got sick of it it kind of went by the wayside and it just wasn't looking its best so last fall I ripped up um, everything that was here I ripped out the paths. the only thing I left was this the general shape and I've redone everything since then. And we are at the point now where um, I can start finishing up the planting. I'm gonna show you a little bit around, show you all the plants that we've done so far. And I just have to finish up one section in each one of these little quadrants that I've made. Um, and so I'll show you what I'm gonna be planting there and just kind of give you, um, give you a, a overall view of what's going on in this garden. Okay, so at the top of the um, oval. This part of it is maybe a little bit shadier, about half of the day it's in shade, so I've got kind of shadier plants here. Um, right now it's early in the morning, so it's actually um, sunny over here right now. So um, I planted a whole bunch of bobo hydrangea over here. They are already looking great. They're already, um, most of them are about to flower, which I'm excited about. I think those will fill in and just be a mass of fluffy white blooms, and those only get about um, two and a half feet tall, so they'll be great. The center of each section has a boxwood, and the way this is drawn out, I'll link this to you, the way this is drawn out is that there's a diamond shape from the boxwood in each segment, and that's where I'm gonna determine what goes in each segment. And then over to the right is, um, that's Hacklenacoa All Gold. That's something that I transplanted from a different spot in the garden. It does really well for me, um, so, and I like that, contrast in the foliage and then the annual that's going to go in here is um, this ruffles peach um, uh, impatience and I have to tell you it's not looking super peach to me right now but maybe that color will change a little bit um, I don't have a ton of those I wasn't able to get a whole bunch of those so I may have to fill in the spaces with something else but I'm gonna plant them and we'll see so that's the first section next section is um, ladies mantle which I have all over my garden it's one of my go-to must-have plants it grows in sun it grows in shade it transplants well it does its thing so that was um, and it gets these beautiful sh kind of fluffy chartreuse flowers um, that look so nice in arrangements so ladies mantle um, there uh, boxwood course in the middle this is a, um, a new dahlia for me. It's called HS Flame. It's a purple foliage with a nice bright red flower on it. Um, and I love the dark foliage combination here. And then the annual that's going to go in here is one of my favorites. This is uh, Meteor Shower Verbena Bonariensis. It's a short one. It only gets about, I think it's 20 to 30, it says 20 to 30 inches tall. You know, the regular Verbena Bonariensis gets five or six feet tall which obviously wouldn't work here. But I love this plant. In fact, I'm putting it in containers and everything else this year. So um, that's gonna fill in this whole section. Moving around, this is where things get a little weird. Um, rhubarb in that section. I love rhubarb. I don't have a lot of places in my yard to grow it at this point. Um, and I think that I love the contrast in foliage texture, this big, bold foliage compared with everything else. Um, that is an older plant and then it's surrounded by some newer plants. So once that all fills in, I think this will be a whole section of just big, bold, almost tropical looking leaves. I think that's gonna look really good. Um, over here, I have um, David Austin roses. That's, um, it's the Alnwick rose. It's a pink. 
I've seen pictures of it from very corally to light pink. I think it might fade. I'm not going to know for sure until it blooms, which I hope it'll do this year. And growing in between there, I've got um, one of my favorite ajugas. That's chocolate chip, which I find to be a great ground cover. So that'll hopefully fill in that area. And the um, annuals that's going to go in the front section of that, I'm going to do a combination of Super Tunia White with um, Diamond Delight, which is, this is a double form of the Euphorbia. Um, I can't think of the name of it right now. But this is the double of it, and it stays really light and fluffy, and I just think that all white combination is going to look really great there. And then moving around, this is another kind of different, different choice. I've got Egyptian walking onions. Um, I don't know. You can see they're starting to flop a little bit. I don't know if this is going to work. This is, we're going to try this this year and see what happens. But I think these are just sort of exotic and different looking. And again, it's a different texture than everything else that's going on here. The dahlia that's growing over here is um, Circan. It's a water lily type of dahlia that is kind of a lavendery blue color, or supposed to be. So that's going to be there. And then here I'm going to do a combination of um, Goldilocks Rocks Bidens, which is, here's one of the flowers. Um, and this gets kind of, these bloom all year long. It is such a good doer. It will bloom until, well, actually, I, I'm pretty sure it made it through a couple of frosts. Um, so that gets sort of, sort of loose. And then in between that, I'm going to put some uh, gold dust uh, Mercadonio? I'm not sure how you pronounce that. I just know it's gold dust. It stays really low. It gets cute little yellow flowers, same color as the Bidens. And again, I think that texture contrast is going to be really good and that biden's like i said it's loose this stays nice and tight so i think the combination of those two is going to look really good there and then the middle is is finished for now um so i've got chives around the outside the entire garden is lined in what i call a chive hedge um inside of that i have two different alyssums um blush night and dark night i believe are the two names uh this is all uh thai basil um it's kind of an ornamental basil that i grew from seed and there's actually two new clematis that are in the middle um, they're both being a little pokey about getting going so we'll see i don't know if they'll bloom this year or not but they should get climbing up this obelisk and that's all i'm going to do in the center uh, so the center's finished. So I'm just going to get these annuals in now, and then I'll tell you what the next step for this garden is.
All right, so um, you can see that the planting is all done. Um, I'm actually most happy with this white area. I think um, originally I did this because I didn't, I didn't think I'd be able to get enough of the white petunias, um, but I'm so happy with the different textures in here, and I think this is going to grow in really well. So next steps for this garden. Uh, first, I'm going to water everything really, really well. Um, it's been really windy here, um, so everything's drying out really quickly. So everything's going to get a really good dose of water. Then I'm going to mulch everything. Um, and then the next st step to do is to get the real gravel that goes in these paths. It's going to be a nice gray gravel. I didn't want to put it in until I was done planting because I'm a really messy planter and I didn't want to spill a bunch of dirt into the gravel, which is just going to grow weeds then. So the longer, the longer I can keep this area without a bunch of soil in it, the better off the weed situation is going to be. This is just like a paver base, compacted paver base that I put in last fall. I'll put links to all the, um, all the posts that I've written about this garden and sort of where it's come from. But I am really excited to see how this garden is going to come together this, this summer. Some of the perennials I'm certain are going to take a while. So I'll have to be a little patient on that. I don't think the clematis is going to bloom probably this year, but I'll just cross my fingers on that. Um, but so far I'm really happy with how this is and certainly about a million times better than what it was. So, um, so that's this. I hope you enjoyed seeing this. Um, I'm really happy with where this garden is going and it's really different for the yard. So um, I will keep updating you and posting pictures and maybe we'll do some more videos as the summer goes on to see how everything grows in. So go get out in your garden. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.